Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The very interesting story we have here this morning. Out of the third chapter of 1 Samuel. And the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. And Eli was a prophet, right? And Eli's sons were also prophets of, and priests. They were ordained priests into the service of the Lord. And they served the Lord at Shiloh. Okay? There's some problems with this story, though. Aren't there? Did you hear them? As it was being read? That was really good reading of the story, too, by the way. It was... How many times did it take Eli to figure out what was going on? But isn't Eli a priest? So shouldn't Eli know when God is calling? And it says Samuel was a boy who was ministering to who? Who was he ministering to? The Lord, which is who? Oh, this is not hard this morning, people. Come on. Are you awake? Do we need coffee? Eli was a boy, and he was ministering to who? The Lord. And who is the... Maybe I just need to turn my hearing aids up. And the Lord is who? (coughs) Say it louder. Say it louder. Use your outside voice. God, right. Eli is ministering to God under Eli, who is a priest. So what about this verse 7 down here then? Samuel, remember, Samuel is ministering to God. And then verse 7 says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Is that not, is that not a problem? If someone is ministering, to, serving the Lord, but yet they don't know the Lord, isn't that a problem? How does that, how does that work? How does all of this play together? You see, this story is about God calling Samuel out of a house of priests that aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. Because it says that once, once they figure this out, right? Once Eli gets that, and Samuel keeps coming back to him, it's like almost like Eli doesn't know the Lord either. Because Samuel keeps coming back and saying, you called me. You would have think that it would have taken Eli only once or twice maybe to figure out that this was God calling Samuel. But it takes Eli three times to figure this out. And once the God actually gets through to both Eli and to Samuel, right? It's not just to Samuel here, it's to Eli too. He tells Samuel what? That he is going to do what he said he was going to to the house of Eli. And that's at the end of chapter 2. And why is he doing this? Because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Does anybody know what Eli's sons were doing to blaspheme against God? It has something to do with this. What do we put in here? Money. This and this is money for who? For, for God. Right? This is the money that the, when they they'll pass it around here in a little bit. And you'll put your offering in here. The money that we use to run the temple. This isn't a temple, but you know, the money we use to run the temple and to do ministry for God in the world. And Eli's sons were Misusing the temple funds. And Eli knew it. He didn't do anything about it. And when he did try to do something about it, it didn't do any good. So God said that he was going to cut Eli and his and his sons off because they were taking from God what was God's and not using it for the right reasons. 
And so God comes to Samuel and he tells Samuel all of this. And then the next morning he's afraid to tell Eli. Well, would you be afraid to tell Eli? But what's going to happen to you? Right? Eli is probably going to get upset. But Eli has the best prophetic pastoral response I've ever heard. Right? It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Because Eli actually is a good priest. Because he gets it. He knows that no matter what they do, no matter what kind of offering he tries to bring, no matter what kind of penance he tries to do, that God's not going to accept it. Because Eli and his children have gone too far. But he also knows that God can still work through Samuel. Because what could have Eli done once he figured out who was actually calling Samuel? I heard, I heard it. Or maybe my hearing aid is just playing tricks on me. He could have tricked him and told him it was something else that he was just hearing things. But he told him what was going on and that God was calling him. You see, and that's the thing. And we wonder, why did it take Samuel and Eli three to four times to actually understand that God was calling them? So my question for you this morning is, how many of you have ever heard God call you? What did you say? Did you say not yet? Do you want a show of hands? <laughs> Do I want a show of hands? I, I just wonder how many of you have heard God call you? I got one brave, two brave souls, three brave souls. How, okay, my next question is how many of you miss the fact that God has called you? That's, that's everybody. <laughs> hands, right? Because did you hear what I told the kids up here? It went right over their heads. I know. This is a hard one to do a children's sermon on. But did you hear what I told them? You don't have to serve God here. It's not about serving God in this building or in another church someplace. It's not about God doesn't call us only to serve him in, in, the, in the building where we come to worship. God doesn't call us to serve Him only as pastors or as deacons or as, as people in the church, right? God doesn't call us to do those things. There's people, bless you, there's people that do things for this congregation that people have no idea about because they do it behind the scenes. And those are people that are called to use their gifts to do the things that happen here, right? We normally don't notice when there's light bulbs out. We don't notice when there's something going on in the bathroom. We don't notice when something needs to be fixed someplace else. We don't notice when the piano doesn't work. Because you come here and all of these things just magically happen. But you know what? There's people that have these gifts that use them day in and day out. In this place and every place else. And they have those gifts. Why? Who gave them to them? God did. Who said that? Nice. <laughs> God gave those gifts to you. If it's doing the books good, God gave you those gifts. If it's understanding how to raise children in a way that they're going to come up to respect their parents and respect other people and, and live a life that is, that is fulfilling and giving back to the community, that's a gift. Right? And God has called each and every one of you. Yes, part of my calling is to find people that want to go on and, and, and become what I am. Even though I'm trying to talk my daughter out of it. But my calling also is to help you understand your calling. Because you are called as a child of God. This morning we're going to see that happen right here. Piper is going to come up here in just a little bit with her mom and her dad and her sponsors. And God's going to name her and claim her as, her as his own child. And he has already given her a gift. What it is, I, do, you guys, do you guys know yet? <laughs> no, probably not. We don't know. You may never know what that gift is, but God is calling you to use that gift in the world. God is calling you to be his child. God is calling you to trust him and to know that when he speaks to you, that he's going to lead you and help you to do the things that he needs for you to do. So be willing and able.
Have your ears open, listening for when God calls. Because it's not a, not a if God called you, it's a when God called you. Or when will God call you. Because He will call you. And He will use you. If you'll only be open and accepting to listen and to follow when He does.